Hello and welcome to this week's Independent Music Podcast. Ten of the best new tracks each week, hosted by me, Anthony Chalmers, and me, Gareth May. Hello, welcome to a brand new year, brand new independent music podcast. Uh, we kicked you off with the soothing sounds of DJ Bishop, a track called Dollar Sign, featuring Apocrypa Crisis. I don't think I can get my words out yet. I've got to warm into this new decade of ours. Get, get your velvet tones warmed up for 2020. That's certainly true. And I've had a bit of a interesting trip with this record. So it actually came out towards the back end of last year, I almost played it on our favourites of the year because I enjoyed it so much. But it came out after we recorded our last sort of original pod, if you like. And I've just really enjoyed it, but also have no idea where the guy's from. I'm pretty sure DJ Bishop is from Atlanta, but the blurb around it keeps talking about Ukrainian dungeon rap. Just, <laughs> I was like, I'm pr- pretty certain he's not from Ukraine. Did it say tape something from 1997 there on the band camp? Uh, yeah, it's not. Um, I think that might be when he was born, which is a uh, chronic in terms of like our age. But yeah, it's definitely a contemporary release. It is DJ Bishop. The album called Volume 5, We Up Underground Doesn't Stop. Like I said, the track called Dollar Sign, and it's released on Manchester's brilliant uh, Natural Sciences. Sounds like record. a classic Manchester release. Yeah, well, Natural Sciences is a really interesting record label. We played Mountain Full Edition from them back, uh, what was it, in podcast 232, so what, June last year, and yeah, which was like some Japanese experimental music. This one from Atlanta, I think, and the MC on it, actually, Epoch Crisis. He's also got an EP out at the moment, which is very, very good, and I might be playing in subsequent weeks of this podcast. Nice. First one from me, first one of the decade is an artist. There's not that many artists that when they do a record, I just automatically buy it. I buy every single release from this one. What artist do you buy every single release from? Um, Whack Whack Kingdom. Well, I've only done, like, what, two? Three. three. Yeah, <laughs> yeah um, it used to be the OCs, but then... They it, released too many albums. Too many albums, but also too expensive, man. Like, their last record was, like, £30. And, and do you understand where the money goes? It's not like they're completely ripping you off, because the pressing is beautiful the artwork is beautiful the sleeve everything is wonderful about it so you can see where the money's going but man that cadence of releasing you just can't keep up like not quite willing to spend 120 pounds a year i I understand if you only like that one band but if you like (laughs) want to support loads of other artists at the same time and loads of other labels it's just impossible well an artist i own every single release has ever done on vinyl is from liverpool it's forest swords He's just announced uh, a soundtrack to a film. It's uh, filmed by drones and about drones. And it's called Do Drones Go to Heaven is the name of the song here. And uh, The Machine Air is the name of the film. Haven't seen the film yet, uh, but uh, the record is great. And this is a track from it. Thank you. 
There we go. That is Forest Swords with his track Do Drones Go to Heaven from the original score to the film The Machine Air. It came out on Dense Truth Records on the 4th of December, so a few weeks ago. I don't know too much about uh, the film, apart from what I said, that it's filmed by drones, but it is also about drones in some way. And it's uh, I think it's a sort of mixed fiction documentary thing. The photos from it look absolutely brilliant and yeah, I mean, I'm not I'm not someone who goes to a lot of experimental cinema and you've got so much time, but um, I know there's amazing stuff there that's going flying past me on drones, perhaps. There's quite a few, like, experimental film festivals, certainly in northern London Definitely. as well, and around about. I've now completely forgotten the name of the label uh, that runs the Hackney one, but they put out some... <laughs> this is a really bad radio because I've then just suddenly said, I don't know who I'm talking about, but they do some good stuff. Strong I'll, effort. I will, I will try and figure it out while you continue speaking. The Machine Air, the film, is by director Liam Young as well, that I wanted to mention. I'm going to find out that recommendation for you whilst this track is playing. This one is from the brilliant Central Processing Unit record label. I think from Sheffield, I think I've got that right, yes. This is from uh, Trefeme, uh, which is definitely not the way you say this name. It's the moniker of Tiffane Berlin. She had a record a couple of years ago now called Online Dating, also through Central Processing Unit. They're an amazing experimental electronic record label. That doesn't ring a bell to me. You played no, them on the pod before? Yep, a couple of times for sure. Cool. This album called Illuminia. I haven't heard the whole thing, I've just heard the lead track, which is what I'm going to play for you now. It is cracking. It's called Inner Cyber Spiral by Trefemi. So easy 
up level down tempo dub there guys i am so into it it's uh, the sounds of trifem or trifeme i don't know how to pronounce that but it's the moniker of tefane berlin uh, she's a producer and yeah the track called inner cypher spiral on the album Illuminia, released via central processing unit out of sheffield it's absolutely killer i love that is a very ethereal start to the year that we've had. And I was thinking about playing here. something a bit down-tempo after this as well, but then I was like, nah, no way, I'm going to play something else. All right, well, just to close off a conversation we were having before uh, related to the Forest Swords, the brilliant experimental record label I was stretching for is Psyche Tropes. Got this one record in front of me now. I had to dig into my collection to remember the label, which is HFF, Hackney Film Festival Volume 1, which is a triple LP released in 2014, which was their first ever release, triple LP of experimental sounds and sort of weird noises. And that is a bold first ever release. Yeah, an expensive first release. Yes, yeah, Stephen from the label is uh, is based in London, uh, obviously in Hackney Film Festival, and is actually playing a show for me January the 25th at Corsica Studios, uh, Corsica Studios, at Cafe Otto, sorry. Uh, he sent me a record late last year, also a compilation of um, interesting, weird and wonderful things. And they also did a gig the other day, I was mentioning to Gaz off mic, it was something like 30 people on 30 record decks doing weird sounds, some sort of rec- scratchy record deck orchestra. <laughs> uh, yeah, and just to close off around Trifeme, that record is out on the 31st of January, it's called Illuminia. Her previous one called Online Dating was released in 2017, also through Central Processing Unit. Nice. Since this is our first pod of the year and we did our favourites of the year in a few weeks before, some songs I've got here, including this one, have been in my sort of things to play on the pod for ages. And I've got absolutely not a clue where this came from. So um, maybe I'll look for it where it came on. It's from Russia. It's a metal. The band is called Megalith Leviathan, and this is Acid Doom Rites.
you go. That is the sounds of Megalith Leviathan. Very clear what type of music they were going to make after uh, you hear the band name. I mean, you just go look at that cover. <laughs> it, yeah, the band Strong. name, the cover. Oh, I reckon that could be the winner for what we're using for the cover for this week. What Gaz. is it, a flaming skull, is that? Yeah, it's a flaming skull with a snake and there's some, f- yeah. Fire. Yeah, there's, <laughs> there's, there's, there's fire, there's skulls, there's snakes. It's The Sounds of Megalith, the Viathan. The track's called Acid Doom Rites. That's from the Addicted label. Thanks to Anton for sending that to me. He's been sort of uh, reasonably regularly sending me stuff. They are from Chelabinsk, which is in sort of central south Russia near Kazakhstan. I think that's how they pronounce it as well, Chelabinsk. Exactly like that. It's funny, I was looking at the map and I was like, you know, Moscow and St. Petersburg are just so far west compared to the entire rest of Russia. <laughs> it's just like, you know, yeah, I think it must be funny when the capital is... I reckon it's the equivalent of having, if you're, if you're on the edge of Siberia, it's like having, I don't know, Austin being the capital of England. For any new listeners to the Independent Music Podcast, that is the level of insight <laughs> that <laughs> Moscow is very far west of the rest of Russia. Yeah. It is true. Uh, I mean, <laughs> uh, maybe, yeah, Austin being the capital of England, I mean, maybe they'd do it better. Everyone I've met from Austin <laughs> is very lovely. and the, the Some probably, good record labels from there, some great bands. Yeah, exactly. They'd probably do things a lot better than the people in our hometown. I am going to play some music from a place called Salvador in Brazil. This is from an uh, artist. Uh, Monica is Susanna's Balton is the name of them, but it's actually the project of a person called Susanna Balton. <laughs> This music, it's just like wonderful sound art. It's like layers and layers and layers of noise built on top of each other. Absolutely magnificent. The album that it's from is called Epiphania Cyber Pager Inda Pusas de Lama Pos Dimensione. That was outstanding. It really wasn't. Any Portuguese speakers will be cringing, I'm sure. Uh, the Google doesn't really have a good translation for the album title, but the track is called Cidade das Estrelas, which means Star City. Sounds like this at Susanna's Belton.
there you have it sounds of Susanna's Belton track called Today Das Estrellas taken from the album Epifania Cyber Pager in the podcast de Lama Post Dimensionas <laughs> Jesus <laughs> wow what uh, is Brain Ticket <clears throat> Death and Brain Ticket Death is the name of the uh, Detroit Michigan label ah, that see. have released that record uh, yeah like say, Project to Susanna Belton, she's from Salvador in Brazil, released a couple of releases on Spain's Cranial Fracture Records, a couple of other experimental electronic labels around the world over the last couple of years. One of those ones, I'm not even sure how that came to me. I think it came through um, South American Music Blog or something like that, that I dug that out from. Longer term listeners to this podcast will know there's quite a lot of weird, wonderful artists doing work in south america at the moment that we like to bring onto the pod yeah well definitely it's incredible music coming from every corner of the world i want to play you a track that was actually um recommended to me by my girlfriend she was just like absolutely love this obsessed by it listen to it all the time you need to play it on the pod so i liked it and i thought that i would she's an artist called laugh and wonder if i'm pronouncing that right done a release on warp a couple of years back, this is from her album Ancestor Boy, came out at the very end of last year, and the track is called Parallel X.
There we go. That's the sounds of La Fonda. That track's called Parallel. It's out on Concordia Records. She is a half Iranian, half Egyptian artist, grew up in Paris, also uh, lived in Tehran in her childhood. And yeah, that came out mid-December uh, of last year. Yeah, it's 2020 now. December 9, 2019 is last year. And yeah, I like that very much. I definitely want to listen to some more. She's a name I've seen around a bit in this experimental pop sort of circles, but I've never got to know. No, no, I've, uh, completely new to me. Also in sort of the, maybe the last track of sort of mopping up the late 2019 music is this one from a South African producer, uh, Rose Bonica. She released a couple of things on Bandcamp towards the end of last year. She's been doing this project, putting out sort of scraps called Here Are My Scraps, sort of her sort of... That's prod- what it says on the tin. Yeah, exactly. Her sort of extra tracks here and there. There was one called Distortion Clapping, which is absolutely killer. I am going to play this something else there instead which is from her ep called mouthful of concrete came out on wet dreams recordings out of cape town south africa and this track is called it's like winter without you
almost blinded. Uh, released via Wet Dreams recordings out of Cape Town, South Africa. That's Rose Bonica. track called It's Like Winter Without You, taken from her EP called Mouthful of Concrete, out right now. And yeah, like I said before the track, she is releasing a lot of different things through her band camp, a lot of pay what you like uh, dance floor smashers in there as well. So definitely <laughs> that was worth, a dance floor smasher. You're definitely worth dig out that one, not pay what you want download because it's a quote unquote proper release. But yeah, it is definitely worth picking Probably willing up. to pay, pay a quid or two for that. Exactly. I'm going to play you something from one end of the opposite of a party banger. It is the second track from the new Buren and the Club of Gore album, which is coming out in February. This is absolutely beautiful. It's called Tief Gesunken. The Magnificent Sounds of Bruins, a Club of Gore. Really quite different than the uh, first single that came from Patrilli Blue, 
with this with the more of the synthesizer sound the other one being more of a sort of stripped back jazz tune the song is called translated into english it's called sunk deep I, I love the way it sort of faded out to be almost the end of the song multiple times then kicked back in with that saxophone it was uh, Gaz, deep. Uh, was nearly exactly he thought he was he thought he was coming back in multiple it, times there radio panic <laughs> yeah just a uh, christ they're coming back in the sunk deep well it's it's pure filth here for 2020 <laughs> yeah i'm gonna just skirt around that but no that's uh when's the album coming out Burham um one? it was supposed to be 21st of january but i believe it's going to be a week or two delayed but something along those lines uh, end of january first week of february and who is putting it up? It's their own label. Ah, I ex- can't. I forget the name. Excellent business. I'm going to play some music from Japan now. It's from an artist called Yusuke Tokunaga. He is a avant-garde uh, composer. He released a couple of great records last year, one of which actually called Eight Furnitures appeared on Kevin Martin's Best of 29 for Boomcat, which I found out actually after I'd already earmarked this one for play. Kev's always listening to great stuff. He is. And so essentially he's put together a collection of music that has not been released that he's made over the last few years, but it's been stitched together really beautifully. You can't really tell that the album is just loads of what you'd call offcuts, maybe. It's hard to pick a single track out to do the whole piece justice, because even though it is a collection, it does feel like it's been mixed together incredibly well. The album is called Unpublished, then followed by 11 commas. Uh, each, <laughs> each track is the requisite number of commas, so first track is one comma, second track is two commas, etc., etc. There are 11 tracks, so 11 commas. This is the second one, so it's just two commas. It's like Yosuke Tokunaga.
there you have it like i say it's quite hard to pick a track that does the whole thing justice but i assume you can imagine what that whole album must feel like if it's you know best part of an hour of those sorts of sounds scratchy yes yeah, moving around is absolutely beautiful stuff the artist is called yusuke tokunaga the album called unpublished followed by 11 commas is for a limited amount of time a pay what you want download on bandcamp so if you go to tost t-o-s-t dot bandcamp dot com that's the label it's his own label then he like trust yeah Rather that's than, what i thought yeah it's like is that trust records <laughs> well i saw they'd release on it because it's not too dissimilar to some of the stuff that trust could put could out be, yeah. so vienna label or Austrian? i was thinking that it was german but you could be right yeah so th- another great label like i say he's had a couple of releases out he re- self-releases always stuff eight furnitures last year definitely worth checking out i think the other one was called seven patterns it's wonderful stuff that's yosuke tokunaga yeah nice not an artist that i've come across before um thank you very much for listening to this week's pod it's an absolute pleasure to have you back with us for the new year thanks again for supporting us uh, for last year which is a bumper one for us i hope you enjoyed all of our best of the years and if you're a patron i hope you enjoyed our bonus fourth favorite of the year the Patreon is where you can go to help support us financially if you're feeling that way inclined. You get bonus episodes and you can chat to me and Gareth about what about stuff. And we do need to say a big thank you to HKCR, uh, the catchly titled uh, new patron of ours. Thank you so much for supporting the podcast. Came in towards the back end of 2019. Uh, very, very grateful. Thank you very much, pal. And little plug for our live podcast in London on the 8th of February at Eclectic in Waterloo. If you want to come join us for that... We would very much love that. Yeah, you can get the tickets from Ticket ABC, also independentmusicpodcast.net forward slash live. You can find tickets there as well. And yeah, come on, come down. It'll be fun to see you all. <laughs> We're only a little bit nervous. I'm going to leave you with the sounds of Ashtray Navigations. Ashtray Navigations, band from Leeds. Been going since late 80s, early 90s, perhaps. Phil Todd is the main guy, sort of an experimental hero from those parts and he did a record called The Fabulist that came out at the tail end of last year. I think it was actually more like November, been due for a little bit, and I think it might have been our regular listener, Robbie Judkins, who sent this to me. Cheers, Robbie. So he's responsible for many, many a play on this pod. This is a very long song. Might get all of it. You might get some of it, depending on how we feel. And the track is called A Carbine is a Beautiful White Bird. Bye-bye.
Thank you.